Hello, today I'll be walking you through how to use the ground lease valuation module in my all-in-one model for underwriting real estate. Now this module covers a scenario where the property that you are uh, evaluating is encumbered partially or entirely by a ground lease. Or in other words, you're modeling just the value of the improvements or the leasehold interest. And in this model, there's two ways to do that. The first is to include the ground lease payments in your operating expenses such that when you capitalize NOI or you discount the net cash flows, the reduction in income or the reduction in value from the ground lease is reflected in the total value. The problem with doing that is that ground lease payments change from year to year going out into the future. And at some point in the future, the owner of the leaseholder, the owner of the improvements may lose those improvements when they are forced to return those to the owner of the ground lease. And so the second method for valuing the ground lease is to actually determine the value of that ground lease, or in other words, the value of the land itself, and then subtract that from the total value of the investment as if it were a fee simple uh, interest. So let me show you both. Uh, first, let's look at just simply including the ground lease payments in the operating expenses. So what I'll do here is I'm just gonna come down to multifamily tabs. We're gonna assume this is just a, an apartment. We're gonna to come to MF settings. And then under expenses here, we're gonna find one that we don't necessarily need. Um, so let's use service contracts. So we'll include service contracts under r &M, and we're just gonna call this ground lease such that when we move to the operating statement and we have the ground lease here, we would drop the ground lease payments, uh, any increase uh, on a percentage per year basis, and set the fix to 100%. And now the NOI will be reduced equal to the amount of the ground lease. And capping that NOI, at whatever our market cap rate, will result in a reduction in the value as a result of those ground lease payments. Again, though, that doesn't reflect well the value of the ground lease, or not, at least with the precision that you might want. So I'm just going to undo what I just did. Now I'm going to use the ground lease valuation module. And here I'm actually going to value the ground lease using a discounted cash flow. So on row 35 currently of the summary tab, I'm just going to move this to yes. I'm also going, going to unhide the report tabs because that will show you the impact of using this module. So when we turn this to yes, a GL uh, tab will become available to you on the bottom. We're just going to come over here. And what you'll see here off to the left are some assumptions. And the right is the cash flow going out into the future of this ground lease. And the idea is we are thinking of ourselves as the ground lessor, the owner of the land, who is leasing the land to a pro to a, an improvement, an owner of the leasehold interest, an owner of the building or improvements. And that lessor, right, is receiving each year ground lease payments through from lease start until the lease end date. And at this lease end date, there's an assumption that the lessor will get the property back, right? Or in other words, they will receive a, a, a value equal to the entire value of the property, both the leasehold and the ground itself. And the, the present value at some discount rate of all of those cash flows going out into the future is the present value of that ground lease. So your inputs are simple. The first is you'll just drop in the land size and cumber by the ground lease. And this is more for, for visual purposes only. And this cannot be greater than the total number of acres in the investment as set out in the summary tab. Then you'll drop in the lease start date, uh, the ground lease start date, the ground lease end date, and then this cell will automatically calculate the number of years remaining in, on the ground lease from analysis start to the ground lease end date. Next, you'll drop in your discount rate, and currently that's, simp that's just set to the discount rate for all cash flows of the investment. Now, theoretically, the, the, the payments of the ground lease are less risky 
than the payments or the cash flows from the investment itself. And so this should be less than the discount rate that, that you're using for the investment. So here in this case, I'm just going to use 5%. And then finally, I use this general growth rate. And, and the reason for that is you see column I is an orange column. Those are optional inputs. This right here is calculating what the module believes the residual value of the land is or of, of the land and improvements uh, is at the lease end date. But every ground lease is a little different. And, and so that's why we've left this, I've left this as orange. Um, and so you'll need to look at, at this value and determine 100 years from now if this is appropriate or, or not. But how this is calculated is it takes the residual or the reversion value of the investment itself at whatever your, your uh, analysis end date is. And it grows that by 2% until the end of the ground lease. Uh, or it grows it by the general growth rate. So in this case, 2% which reduces to 0%. That drops this value to be equal to, and we'll go over here and see that value, right? Your, your gross rev reversion value. Uh, but again, we grow that at some growth rate, then that grows over almost 100 years to 110 million. Now you'll notice the impact on the present value is it's not nominal, but it's not it, you know it's not enormous, and that's because that 110 million here is so far out into the future that the present value is de minimis. Last, you're you're going to model out the actual ground lease payments based on the terms of the ground lease, and they a lot of times are either increasing by a percentage per year or an amount every five or ten years or it may be a percentage of the value of the total investment. I mean, everyone's a little different. And so you have here the ability to just drop in those payments per your opinion of the payments. And with that, we arrive at a present value of the ground lease. And how this is impacted or how this impacts the overall value of the investment itself is we come to the property cash flow tab. And we see here the gross property value of in each year just how the model is, is typically run. And that's just simply taking either NOI or cash flow from operation at the end of that year and capping it at some cap rate here, okay? But then that amount is reduced by the value of the ground lease to arrive at a net property value. And such that your reversion value here at the end of your hold period is going to be equal to your gross property value less the value of the ground lease. And that makes sense, right? So someone 10 years from now buying this property is going to pay less for this than they would for an equal, the, the exact same property but not encumbered by the ground lease. And the, the assumption is they would reduce the value that they'd be willing to pay by, in this case, 3.4 million. Now notice it, it grows every year and that's because you're getting closer to the ground lease reversion. The module shows this both on an annual basis as well as on a monthly basis. And that is reflected then in your IRR, both on a annual and a monthly basis. So as we move back to the summary tab, we'll see here, uh, currently, uh, as you know, the model uh, gives you both a, 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 present, a present value uh, at your discount rate, uh, and it gives you a stabilized, uh, capitalized value based on your cap rate and your stabilized NOI year. And so we see the difference in those two values. And then uh, here we can choose which value we prefer for, if in the case of acquisition, for our purchase price, so DCF versus direct cap. Okay, now again, notice this, and then watch what happens when we turn the ground lease valuation module off. It increases back to a value uh, inclusive of the land. And that's the ground lease valuation module. Feel free to reach out if you have questions, comments. Uh, this is how I value ground leases. Maybe you have a different method. I'd love to hear it. And thanks for watching.